Welcome to the latest edition of Coach's Corner. I'm Joshua Jacobs, CEO of College Golf Experience. Joining me today is Coach Newton, Coach Christian Newton of Colorado State, the head men's golf coach. Coach Newton, how are you doing today? Doing great. Thanks. Thanks for having me on, Josh. We just uh, we just got off the golf course. We're here at our last tournament of the fall here at Poppy Hills, and um, you know, any day on the Monterey Peninsula is a good day. So all good. I was just about to uh, to say the same thing. Not bad if you are uh, golfing on the peninsula. That's right. Let's uh, let's start off by telling the audience a little bit about yourself and your golfing and coaching career. Yeah. So so I um, I kind of fell in I fell in love with college golf as a player. I played at Georgia Southern back um, ninety seven through oh one I believe, and yeah, just fell in love with the experience and in playing college golf. I went to a place where I could play and. Played, played right away and played pretty much all four years in every tournament and just really loved the experience. And uh, my coach at the time, Larry Mays, he said, you know, if you ever want to come back, you could be my grad assistant. And uh, sure enough, I had a, I had a year out of college where I bounced around a little bit, play in and then having a normal job and went back to Georgia Southern and got a grad degree. I was there for, for two years and we had some really good teams. It was top 15 in the country at uh, our second year. And then I went to Alabama. I worked for Coach Siebel for two years. We had some even better teams there. We finished sixth in the national championship my my last last year there, and uh, and then I um, worked for five years with Coach Hepworth at Georgia Tech, uh, and really really loved that. So I was nine years as an assistant coach before I came out to Colorado State, and now I think I'm on my tenth season here at CSU. So yeah, it's it's you know, working close to twenty years of experience in college golf. It's been pretty awesome. Well, your reputation of being a mentor to young college coaches certainly uh, is is prevalent. What college coaching philosophies do you put into play on a day to day basis? Yeah, so we get the question a lot. Yeah, what is your philosophy? And i i kind of I kind of like to look at the whole thing um, kind of holistically, um, not just in golf, but we try to look at like a total person um, approach as far as their golf, their academics and their development as a young man. And we try to put those three together. We, we, we think they all go hand in hand. We don't think that, you know, you can be, you can be a poor student and and put, you know, 60% effort into your schoolwork. And then all of a sudden at two o'clock roll out to the golf course and be a different person. So we think they all kind of go hand in hand and they're complementing each other. So, uh, yeah, my overall philosophy is, is we work on all three of those, um, just as much as one or the other. So we think the, you know, becoming a better young man and being a good student and, and playing good golf, we think all those things go hand in hand. That's a great culture to, uh, strive for. Um, yeah. what was your favorite part of the student athlete experience? Um, you know, for me, um, when I was a student athlete, I, I loved the time um, just on the road with the guys. I think there's just a kind of a unique bonding that goes on once you're on the road with five other guys and your coaches. And so I really enjoyed that part of traveling around and um, playing in different golf courses and, you know, all over the country and uh, just really kind of, you know, building that bond. So, uh, you know, we talk about this a lot. And, and I talk to when I'm, when I'm talking with junior golfers and we talk a lot about you know, that it's really important that you, you're on a team where you can play. It's not like being in football or basketball where you put the same hours in as those other guys and you you still get to put the jersey on and run out of the tunnel or you may get, you know, you still get to sit on the bench. In golf, if you're not in that five and you're not playing, it's it's not a pleasant experience. So you've got to go somewhere where you can play and, 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 and that's how you get better and that's one of the best experiences of it all, so. Great advice for junior golfers out there. What what are the travel and road trips like uh, as a Rams golfer? Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I would imagine that any, just about any program. The you know traveling on the road is is one of the, one of the fun parts because I mean, you know, you're like like where we are right now. You know, you're you're out here playing golf on the Monterey Peninsula, and 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 your your school's picking up the tab for everything. So, um, but but to speak in general though. Um, they're, they're typically very busy. Uh, there's not a lot of downtime. It's, you know, a lot of it is, is, is you're up early and you're at the golf course all day. You practice a little bit, you get some dinner, you go to bed and do it again. So they're, they're on the road can be really busy. There's not a tremendous amount of time for downtime and, and really not a lot of time for like sightseeing or anything like that. Usually we're kind of, kind of dialed in to, to playing golf, eating and resting. Uh, that's kind of what it boils down to. You can, you know, before you know it, a five day trip kind of is, is over in a blink of an eye um, because you just stay so busy and, 
you know, just the nature of golf in general, right? I mean, the rounds are five hours just t- together, you know, not counting your warm up and your practice afterwards. Absolutely. And you talk about the togetherness of the team and, and the chemistry that needs to happen. How valuable is getting to know players uh, in addition to watching their tournament scores? Yeah. So, I mean, that's you know, one of the main reasons, you know, part of the recruiting process. And a lot of that was missed here during COVID is, you, you know, get to, to bring a player in on a visit and, and get to know them and, and get to know that player. So, I mean, I, absolutely. That's a huge part of it is, you know, obviously, you know, you, any coach is going to have some some boxes as far as, you know, certain types of scoring average and certain types of results and certain academic scores and and all those um, different things. Um, but at the end of the day, you're going to have to kind of kind of get get to know that uh, that young man and his family and and see if they're a right fit. And that's why the, the visit is really such an important thing is getting to spend that that day or two days with that young man and his family and, and get to know and, and see if you're the right fit as a coach. Cause there's coaches come in all shapes and sizes and you need to, that, you know, that, that person and yourself, they really need to know what they're getting into because you know, the, you don't want to transfer. They're like, they're like divorces and you don't want, you don't want that to happen. You want to know exactly what you're getting into as a student athlete and what the coach kind of player and family he's getting. So. <clears throat> Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, with the new NCAA rules, obviously those those visits can't happen until junior year, and and with camps, you have the ability to to get to know those juniors a little bit and get to know their game and them them personally. What role do you feel camps can play in recruiting, especially before junior year of high school? Yeah, I, I I do think that they could be a huge part of recruiting. I think we're kind of on a cutting edge thing. Uh, it, it, we've seen it happen in other sports, um, and I think it's coming. I think it's coming in college golf because, like like you said, you you get to know that young man, and and he gets to, you know, you, he gets to, to to interact with the coach. He gets to learn about your coaching styles, and then the coach gets to interact with him, and without even having to come on a visit, and then then you can go and watch him play. You know, you can't watch a recruit play on a, on a visit on campus. So the fact that you can watch them play, talk specifically, you know, with them about, you know, the way you do things in your program, and then you get to know that young man over the course of two or three days. Um, I do think that the camps are on the cutting edge of the, the new way we're going to recruit in college golf. What attributes in junior golfers do you think carry over to them becoming those successful college players that, that you're describing? Um, you know, there are, there are a lot of attributes. There's one that, that I always talk about whenever I have the freshmen that are coming in, they always want to know, you know, what do we need to do to get ready for, for college golf? And I always talk about resiliency, um, because adversity is going to be coming for them in some shape, form or fashion. Um, we don't know what it's going to look like, but I can assure you every freshman is going to tackle some type of adversity and it's how you respond to it is really what determines your success at, as a collegiate athlete, because all of a sudden, you know, you're, you're going into, you know, many players that come on teams, they're usually the best player in their area, their state, their country, whatever it may be. And they've never really had to duke it out with nine other guys or whatever the roster size may be to, 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 to get a spot. And uh, that's what, what's headed for them. Uh, and so it's a lot of times that's a tough transition the, 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 the transition of actually playing golf with a consequence. Most of them have never played where there's a consequence for bad play. You know, for, um, if they play bad in an AJGA tournament, they just can pay $300 and sign up for the next one and no, no harm, no foul. Well, if you play bad in one of my qualifiers, you don't get to go and you have to stay home. Uh, and that's most of the time has never happened to a college golfer or, or you know, these high level junior players. So, you know, just the fact of, uh, of fighting through that adversity where you have to stay home. Or maybe just fighting through, you know, you're having trouble in school or you're, you're homesick or you've lost a loved one or you got broken up with it by your girlfriend. Like all those things are going to ha- those those things happen to 18 to 22 year olds in how you respond to it, um, whether, you know, if you respond to it with a positive attitude and use it as a teaching moment, um, then you get through it. Or do you blame the coach or do you blame your teammates or, you know, how do you respond? And that's what we talk about a lot of times is we have to have the right attitude and the right response to adversity. Um, so yeah, to me, resiliency is key for, for someone coming in. 
clearly you were a great player in your own right in juniors and in the in the college game. What's the one thing you know now that you wish you knew back during your junior golf years? Oh gosh, that's a that's a great question. Um, you know, for me, I think it is a bit of a buzzword, but just to kind of be patient with the process. Um, um, you know, this game of golf, uh, the, getting better is is very much a marathon. It's not a sprint. Um, it's not going to happen overnight. It's not going to happen with a, a club change or a magic golf golf lesson. This whole thing is just kind of piece by piece baking this cake um, over and over again. And it's not necessarily the marathon's not over when you're done with college. It's not necessarily over when you're done with pro golf or whatever it may be. You're just constantly evolving in the game. So for me, patience to realize that it is kind of like a small, it's like a slow moving process and to, to sit back and enjoy that and not to stress out about, you know, not seeing results right away. Well, let's give the, the listeners uh, a little insight into coach Newton. So I'm going to fire off a few quick, quick questions for you. What is your favorite movie? Uh, usual suspects. What are you currently watching or binge watching on TV? Squid Game. <laughs> well done. <laughs> what is your favorite lunch on or near campus? Uh, we have a sandwich place called Spoons. It's awesome. Really cool. And then tell the audience what you think is new and exciting in college golf that they should be looking forward to in the years to come. Oh, that, that's a wonderful question, Josh. Um, new and exciting. You know, I do, I do think there's a lot of changes um, and I don't necessarily know if it's, it's exciting. It's definitely new. Um, but I think we're going to learn a lot about that, you know, the name image and likeness things um, as that continues to evolve uh, in college athletics. And I, when I originally, you know, was, when it was coming down the track, um, you know, obviously you know, to explain a little bit to the listeners is you know you know the student athlete can basically can benefit from you know they can market their self now and potentially earn money off of their likeness uh, and it's happening in football but we're actually starting to see it in some in golf and so it's kind of interesting to see you know how that will evolve and if players and and you know the top level player top level players in college golf will be able to do something like that and, and monetize um from their their play and and their their likeness so that that'd be interesting to see how it comes down that's tremendous insight. Well, Coach Newton, uh, best of luck here the rest of the fall, and uh, we wish you the best of luck in the spring. Thank you so much for being on this edition of Coach's Corner. Great. Thanks, Josh, for having me on. Appreciate it, man.